Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 5th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, when Sysmon was updated last week to Sysmon 11, one of the great new features that was added was a file deletion protection, which essentially will make uh, automatic backups of files that are being deleted. DDA today took a closer look at the feature and sort of explored a little bit its limits. First of all, if you overwrite a file with tools like sdelete that will delete the file and then overwrite the disk space with zeros, well, uh, the undelete feature in Filemon still works. Where it doesn't work, of course, is if you overwrite the file a byte at a time with zeros and then delete it. Then you only end up with a backup of the file with all zeros. However, if you do overwrite it in blocks of one megabyte or smaller blocks, if the file itself isn't one megabyte in size, then it actually worked and preserved the original file. So pretty interesting. Now, a reader kind of reported a little bit an odd issue with removable drives. Apparently, once you enabled that Sysmon feature, you can no longer cleanly unmount the drive because Sysmon keeps files open on the device. And SysInternals promised a fix for this issue in a future update. And yesterday I mentioned how the SALT vulnerability is being used to attack various systems. Well, we have another noteworthy victim here, and that's DigiCert's certificate transparency log. On Sunday, DigiCert reported that they discovered a compromise of the system that's operating their certificate transparency log, and the attacker had access to the secret key being used to sign entries in this transparency log. Now, uh, this, of course, could be used to either hide or fake entries in the certificate transparency log. It only affects one specific log at DigiCert and does not affect the actual sort of certificate authority. That's a little bit difficult to really sort of figure out what the potential impact of this compromise is. Now, first of all, at this point, there is no real evidence that the attacker actually knew what they had access to. But of course, it poses the interesting question, what to do next? Uh, Whether all certificates that were listed in this certificate transparency log should uh, be untrusted and basically need to be reissued. DigiCert, as soon as they discovered the incident, did no longer add any new entries uh, to the certificate transparency log. So another option would be to just trust the certificate transparency log up to May 2nd, uh, which according to DigiCert is the date at which they're pretty sure that the system had not been compromised. As always in Ensign's response, this is still a developing story, so uh, we'll see where this ends up. At this point, there isn't really anything you need to do. This is not really sort of endangering any sort of of the fundamental trust into the DigiCert certificate authority. And uh, it's really sort of up to the certificate authorities and browser makers to figure out how they would like to respond to this particular issue. And of course, kind of lucky that this is not sort of a super catastrophic compromise. So they really can think a little bit about how they would apply their policies and, well, uh, then sort of set uh, precedents for future similar compromises. Browsers differ a little bit in how they deal with certificate transparency logs. Uh, Safari, for example, requires entries in at least two different logs. So a compromise of one log like DigiCert uh, wouldn't really matter in this case. Google Chrome, on the other hand, uses Google's certificate transparency log. And that log is, of course, still intact. And back in April, Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update. And with that, it also patched a vulnerability in WebLogic. And imagine that this vulnerability is now actively being exploited according to Oracle. 
Now, a proof of concept for this remote code execution flaw that doesn't require authentication was published essentially a day after the vulnerability was patched. And well, now we have confirmation from Oracle that it's actively being exploited. So you certainly should not delay applying this patch. And as usual, if you are patching as you're listening to this, you probably need to double check that the system is not already compromised. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks.